All right, in this dialogue tour, ugh, tutorial, we're going to be making a little uh, kind of like get weapon. Pretty much we're going to have a list of weapons in it. We're going to be able to click on that weapon. It's going to show the picture of the weapon on the right side. And we're going to have a button that we can use to get the weapon to add it to our player. So it's really not as bad. As it seems, but we're only going to be using pistols for this case. I've just went ahead and added a little add action to save some time. So go ahead and open the GUI editor. Going to go ahead and make our frame. I'm just going to make it cover the entire section. Position type always set to safe zone. Um, call this just base frame. Now we need a list box to list our weapons. Put that up here. Now we're going to want to have a button to get the weapons with and a picture to display the weapon to the user. Go ahead and give these a class. Button get weapon. Weapon list. And a weapon picture. And they're all position type safe zones. Now, before you do anything else, go back to your folder here. That did not open it. We're going to need to make an HPP file. So we're going to go ahead and make the first one, just call it defines, save as, all types, dot HPP. Now we can delete the old text one, go ahead and copy this and paste it, name another one, call it control. So now leave defines open, go back into the editor press control P come back over here control V and you get a lot of stuff just save it close it don't worry about it now open up control now this is where we're going to be making our well dialogue so we need to go ahead and make our little base so class dialogue test class controls now pretty much oh, we need to make an IDD so IDD equals add one two three four all right so leave that open now go back here press control shift s to save it just dialog test now come over in here and paste it. You can get rid of all the little hints and neaten it up so it looks nice. All right. So now in our net player local, we will have it executing open dialog .sqf. So let's go ahead and just make that open dialog. Now use the command create dialog dialog test being the actual name of everything and head back here might as well save it turn to the editor because we're editing the description now open dialog and it'll come up just like so our button our list box and our uh, picture frame thing I want to go ahead and add a text to the box oh uh, one more thing, make your description.ext file and include both your defines and your control.hpp. Now you're going to have to include your defines first before your control or else you'll have some issues and you won't really be able to figure out what's going on. Alright, so we have it so everything opens up just fine. We're going to add a an actual name 
well, that user can see to the button, so we're just going to call it text equals then our string. So we're going to do it a uh, get weapon. Head back in. Let's see if it shows up as that. Get weapon, just like that. So now we start actually getting into the script part. So we have our list box. We're going to have to remember the IDC. IDC is another word for, well, shortcut for control. So when you see stuff like this command here, LB data or list box data, when you see IDC or control, just know it's talking about this number here, whatever IDC equals. So we're going to be using LB add here in a second, control set text, and config classes pretty much being our main one. So as we're going to be using get number to get a few things from config classes. So now once we open the dialog, we want to go ahead and have it execute another file. So execvm, we're just going to call it get weapons.sqf. Let's go ahead and make that file get weapons. So now we want to go into the config and get, we're going to want to go ahead and just get only the pistols out of it because this is just, we're going to kind of go about how to sort things. Then in future videos we'll kind of extend on this and show how to get just a separate list of specific things such as rifles, pistols, launchers, etc. And you can even sort them even farther to have various things. So we're also going to be going into how to, if you know, like if you go to the class viewer, let's go ahead and just head over there because we're going to have to show you something here anyways. Go to the config viewer. Well, I already still have it selected, but you'll see here I have the PO7 pistol selected, which, where is it? Oh, here it is. Alright, so like here's the... Well, pretty much you can see the actual class name here of the firearm. Go down, you'll see base weapon. So you have one, two... Well, a better one is this, the FN, to use this example. Here's the base weapon, which has no attachments. This one has like the MRD sight. This one will have the suppressor and so on but you can see the base weapon always is the exact same. It has no attachments as you go through it. So we're going to be figuring out how to sort the array of the weapons that we got so it only gives us the base weapons. Just pretty much so it just makes it a little bit easier so you don't have a huge list of the same type of weapon just with different attachments. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new array call it weapon, or let's just call it, yeah, weapon array, equals, now if you can see here, the condition, which is a string, go ahead and make our opening and closing for our string, then the name of the command, config, classes, and then the config that we want to get. So we want CFG weapons, so it's going to be the path of this here. So we have config file, then the two greater than signs, then in quotes CFG weapons. And that's how we can get our it's pretty much going to give us the entire list of all this crap from that. So we're going to stop at CFG weapons. So it was config file, two greater than signs, and our quotes CFG weapons So, just to kind of give you an example, this is going to probably lag out the game, but hint, string, weapon array. Oh boy. Now when I open this, it's going to grab every single thing. And it, you can kind of hear by the sound. Come on, close. Ah, 
crap, I pressed escape too many times. Okay, so anyways, as you can see, that list was just massive and continually going. <laughs> so we're going to use the conditions here to kind of sort through it. So the conditions we're going to want to look for... Alright, so we still have the pistol selected. I want to show you all something. We're going to be getting two things, the type and the scope. Now the scope for two is pretty much all the weapons that you physically use normally. You can hold them in your hand, you can put them in your inventory, use them in your weapon slots, all that kind of crap. So just remember that. Now pistols have a type of two. And that goes the same for the rest of the handguns as you can... And I gotta scroll down again. I just selected the PO7, type is still two. Now if I head up to a rifle such as the MX and we go down to type, it's one. And scope is still two. So we just need to filter out scope for two. And type, if we want to get all the rifles, we just sort type, e e we test if type equals one. If we want all pistols, we test if type equals two. And the same can be done for launchers and such. But we want just the pistols. So we need type equals two. So let's go back in the notepad. I can't keep going past it. So that's going to be done in this condition here. So this is where get number comes in. So get number, then the config. So we have our magic variable x here to use, which pretty much gets all the crap that we need. And it's only going to go pretty much everything past config weapons which is all of these commands here. So we can easily get type without having to go through and define the entire list. So we're going to use get number, then it's going to be the magic variable, then it's going to be the two greater than signs, then because it is inside quotes we just use single quotes to define our little string. So we want the type. So type, then we want to do our check, so equals equals two. So then we're going to do, we want to get the scope as well, so we're going to do our and operator. So it's just two and signs. And also works, but i just familiar with C++ and pretty much a majority of other languages do it this way as well. So just do it that. Or how you want it. And then we're going to do the exact same thing. Get number x scope equals 2. So now if we hint string weapon array it should give us a much shorter list that is not stupidly long. Open dialog and you can see the list. It's got pretty much the path to all the pistols. So Great, now we have all that. Now we need to go through, get the name, which we're going to be getting. Uh, where is it? And I went past it. It's in the D's display name. So, like when you walk up to a gun that's on the ground, scroll wheel on it, it'll say take, and then it'll say the display name. Well, we want the display name to appear in our list box. So we're going to have to do a f make another little array. So we have all the weapons, but we want to sort them kind of specifically. So we're just going to call it pistol array. Just go ahead and leave it empty. And we're going to make a for each command. For each weapon array. And we're going to pretty much be sorting it here. So we have a couple of different things. We should have it listed here. Nope. Right. So, so we can do config name. So let's see. 
wep for weapon equals config name x hint string whip whoops and let's just see what this is going to output alright so it grabbed the single class so it's grabbing the class name which is what we pretty much want to use because when we have the class name it allows us to get all of this crap so you can see here we have the config file then config weapons just like we have it in here we have we got the data from the config file then we have the data from the config weapons now that we have the class name we can go a step farther we can select the specific weapon that we want to get the details from so now that we have this we can simply get the base weapon class name if it's like a modified version with the various attachments and we can get the display name which we're going to need as well so we can do that kinda like so so we're gonna now that we have that we want to go ahead and use the pushback command to push whip into pistol array so whip equals what am I doing pistol array push back whip so now whip has the class name of literally all the pistols including the modified versions so we're not gonna worry about sorting the modifieds out to just the base weapon yet we're gonna make a separate function that we can use to s simply call it it's going to sort it and it's going to use the return value to pretty much give us the net, the newly sorted array. So all we have to do is just pass in the name of the array we want to sort and it'll return pretty much the sorted array. It just does it for us. All right, so now we know what I guess we can go ahead and just start tinkering around and adding it to the list. So if you remember before what I said about the IDC, we're just going to do uh, we need to do another for each command actually. So for each pistol array, that will be add then our square braces and the IDC. The IDC for our list is 1500. Then the text that we want to pass in, which is just going to be X because the, when we passed in web to pistol array, it's already a string, so we don't need to convert it or anything. So we go ahead and save it, and we restart and test it, and it should show all of those inside the list box. Yep. Just like so. Pretty soon we'll have it so when we click on it, the picture appears over here in the picture box. But now what we want. Well, I guess we can do go ahead and do the picture since that's kind of a little bit more interesting. So scroll down and you'll find too far. Wait, not too far. Yeah, here it is. So picture, it already has the path laid out for it. So just like we would get the display name, we would get the, well we haven't got the display name yet. So I guess we'll go ahead and actually do that first just to show you. So we want to add the display name. So we want to get text. Now get text is pretty similar to get number, except well, instead of getting an integer, it gets text. So uh, web name equals get text. Now we have our pretty much sort. So we want to go through config file. CFG weapons. Now all we have to do is just X. So X, since it's the weapon class name, it's going to be this right here. Now we want to get the picture, so it's just literally called pitcher. Is it pitcher or pitchers? Yeah, just called pit. No, wait, we want the display name. 
sorry. So the display name is literally as it states. Display name. And we're gonna go ahead and add web name to the list. So now when we test it, it should show the weapon's name and not the class name. Yep, just like so. So this is what you would see when you walk up to it and you go to pick it up. So now let's go ahead and add the picture here. So go to where's control? Here's control. And here's picture. Uh, we don't want to have anything there actually. Just make it invisible, I guess. I think that's what it does when there's nothing. Alright, but for a picture, pretty much the text is just going to be the path to the picture. If that makes much sense. So, we're going to go ahead and just make another. Well, actually, this is just going to be a continuous loop for while this is open. So, while true do. Now we need to get the picture. So we're just going to go ahead and copy this here. And make it call it a. We want to get the one for the specific weapon. So we got to use a special command from listbox. Should be listbox cursor select, which gives us the index of the selected item. So, and it's the control. So index equals lb cursor select 1500 so if we select the very first element in the list or the very top one it should return 0 then 1 2 so on so now go back to completely lost my train of thought here. Alright, so we got our get text. Alright, right. Control, yeah, just control set text because it's going to be set in the text for this. And we want control set text to simply just be, well, the text of, what's it called? Um, like, the path. So it's going to be this, but instead of display name, it's just going to be picture. So, we also got a slight problem since we altered this so it shows the weapon display name instead of the class name. We can't simply get the text off of just the name. So, we need to actually set data for it for each element. So, we can go back here. Should hopefully see something called set. Yep, there it is. Set data. So, now we're We are adding it here. So what we want to do is just all we have to do is add the data for x. So lb set data open and closing square brackets. Then the IDC being 1500. The index we can use the for each index. So for each index, and then for data we just want to pass in x because x holds the class name if you recall so now the for instance the PO7 9mm slot holds the class name as well inside this slot so all we have to do is just retrieve the data from that index which gives us the data from that slot so we're just gonna call it weapon equals LB data 1500 and then the index that we want to get it from which is index because we already got it here okay so now we have the weapons class name we need to get the picture so we're just going to copy this picture equals change this to picture So now we just got to go and set the text 
which is just going to be setting picture. So CTRL set text. We have our IDC, and the IDC for the picture is 1200. So 1200. And then the text that we want to add, which is picture. So with any luck, when we try it again, it should display it. Yep, we got some errors. Line 23. Oops, because I have X right here. X needs to be weapon. Hopefully that was the only one. I'm going to go ahead and just go back to the editor and go back in just in case. And that thing is still not going away. Alright, so we have our list of weapons here. When we click on it, it shows the picture of the weapon. So we have our everything that we want displaying just nicely, even the starter pistol for some reason. But we have multiple variations of it, like this one should be the default, no attachments, this one should have the MRCO, this one should be the suppressor, and then this one's MRCO and suppressor, not MRCO, I, I can't remember what that little red dot's called, micro something. All right, so we have it showing the picture. And that was as simple as literally just these three lines here. Well, these four lines here. And we have it looping, so it's going to continually, when we select on one, it's going to just display the picture. Otherwise, it would only work once when this runs and if an element is selected. So we can go ahead and just add a sleep so it's not going crazy. Zero point... Uh, that should be fast enough, I think, without it actually looking kind of dumb. Open dialog, click, show, click, show. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so now we have a bunch of weapons of the same type, pretty much. But now we want to get just the base weapons. So we're going to go back into the game. Config find base weapon. So we're pretty much just going to be getting the class name of the base weapon which is here and storing that into pistol array. So we need to use get text just like before. But instead of display name it's going to be base weapon and it should just force it into the array without any problems there is a problem expected string and X alright so let's see X was oh right um, set this back to normal. Oops. So, we need to get our config name. So, we're just going to call it web class equals. Now we paste it in and get rid of x. We're just going to do web. So web should give us the class name, which is going to in turn give us the base weapon value and store it in weapon class. So let's see if it throws any errors. It doesn't. So oh, just to show you the difference, by the way. So hint string pistol array. I'm going to show you a little before and after. Before I run that, I want to go ahead and I'm not saving this yet, so just so I can do a quick alteration. Look here. ACP two F, ACP two S and D S F, and just it shows every single it has a bunch of different ones in it. So now I want to go ahead and save this because we're take we're bumping in the uh, base class name instead. 
and I restart and do it it has all the same so ACP2F ACP2F it's just gonna have multiple repeats so this is where our little sorting uh, function is gonna come in so the commands to easily sort something you're gonna want to use delete Oh, it's right there. Delete at. And we're going to use the find command as well. And whoever wrote the example to gave a nice little example of how to do that. It's going to be the array. Delete at. In that array, find. And then the value you want to search for. What for it to find. So let's just make a new function. Uh, sort. Weapons. Okay. So uh, let's see, we want to do that directly after this is when we want to call it. So call sort weapons, and we want to pass in an array to it. So we're going to just pass in pistol array, since that's the one that has just a bunch of repeats. Now we're, I'm going to show you how to get a return value here in a second, so we're just going to call it array equals this select zero, and we're going to use our delete at. So array delete at, and if you follow this guy's little example here, array find, let's see, we want to actually use a for each in here, because we got it kind of bump through everything. So for each array. So find x. And let's just kind of see how that goes. Hint string array. And just see what that looks like. So open dialog. And that did everything that we needed. So now we have one of each type right here. I'm also going to show you how to get rid of that I don't know what exactly that's the deal is for that, but so yeah, I'll just show you how to go through it this way. It also sorts it for us automatically as well for some reason. I'm assuming this almost acts like a pointer, but at the same time, it doesn't necessarily make sense as to why. I don't know. Anyway, I guess when you, even though this is technically being equal to it, it's still going to modify pistol array. Anyhow, we're going to go ahead and use the return value, or return array, so since we want to make this universal. So in order to make a function return something, whatever you want it to return, it's going to be, well, the very last value or array that is at the end of the function. So if we wanted to make it return one, you just kind of var equals one var. So now if we call it like so, pistol array equals pistol array would now pretty much be equal to one. So now our list should be sorted nicely. It is, but we have this little invisible guy here. So we need to take care of that. And uh, you can also kind of tell, because usually when they're like that, they equal nothing. So if web class does not equal an empty string then we want to add it to the array so it's going it should ignore that one so it doesn't appear at all yep just like so now we only have 
just the list of the pistols. So now we can go ahead and make get one yeah, get weapon functional by using a similar step to what we did in well, the while loop here. We're going to be pretty much just getting the index that we want it and pulling the data from it, which has the class name, and then just player add weapon to the class name. We're actually going to use the uh, Bohemia's command for it. So we can add a couple magazines as well. Now, go to control and in our button we want it to execute a file. In XQF file we're going to go ahead and make a new one. We're just going to call it take weapon. So we're going to want to have it pretty much just execute it when we press it so in order to do stuff when you press the button it's going to run whatever is in action. Not, don't. Yeah, action shouldn't have curly braces. I mean, square braces. So anything that's inside of this string, it's going to do. So we just want it to execute it. So execvm. Then because it's in quotes, just do single quotes. Take weapon.sqf. And just to test that we're in it. Testing. Go back into the game since we made a change to technically the, the description.ext. Go back to the editor and reload it. So just press get weapon. Hint. It hints itself saying testing. So we know the file is running. Let's go ahead and put in the world. Go ahead and go back. We're going to copy these two lines where we got the index that was selected and the data from it being the class name. Now we're just going to do this command here which is the unit being us, so player, then the weapon class name, just weapon, and then it is the amount of magazines, we're just going to do three, then the index that doesn't really matter. That's if you have like tracers and stuff. Then call bis func add weapon and I forgot. Oh, there it is. So now when we click on it, whichever weapon we select, it should give it to us. So let's go ahead and just do the four or five get weapon and it gave it to us with two extra, extra magazines but that command always puts one in the right well firearm too so now we want to switch to PO7 we get it and now we have the PO7 so you can just kind of see how this works Now, because of how long this actually is, I'm on about 38 minutes so far. We'll pick off on another video and kind of go make this a little bit nicer. We should have a couple different selections, so we should be able to kind of have like a little wasteland menu where we can select either, we'll make it like almost a full loadout. So we can select weapon, rifle, pistol, etc. We can try to make it so we can select helmets, vests, and other stuff. And maybe eventually we'll get into actually making a full mission where you have to earn cash. And then in order to actually get the weapon, you have to spend the cash on it. But that would be a very long, lengthy process. So if you know how to do this, and you can do it pretty regularly by yourself, you should be able to pretty much make what I just said without too much of a hassle. So anyways, that's how you make a nice little weapon dialogue. Oh, um, one more thing. So if you notice I don't have anything selected and you press get weapon, nothing happens. Oh, well usually in the other le 
last one when I pressed get weapon that was linked to it through an error. But I guess that's not the case in this one, so ignore what I said. 